Okay, so to install VirtualBox, just go to virtualbox.org. You'll see the big download button. Go ahead and click that. We'll be installing 6.1. That's the latest version that's available. We want to click on VirtualBox Platform Package for Windows Hosts, the top. Go ahead and save the download file. And then once it's downloaded, you can click on it once to run it. It's going to ask a few questions. You can use the defaults, default installation location, all the default options. I don't need a desktop shortcut or a quick launch. Proceed with installation. Install the USB drivers. All right, and we'll go ahead and start it after the installation. Once you've got VirtualBox installed, you can create a new VirtualBox instance. This is like a virtual machine that you'll be creating. To do that, click New. It's asking for a name. We'll call ours Ubuntu 20. It's going to be a Linux system, 64-bit. Click Next. This is the amount of RAM you're going to delegate to that virtual system from your system. I've got 32 gigs of RAM on my system. I'm going to delegate 12 gigs. You need to leave enough for Windows uh, to work with, which is usually 4 to 6 gig. Uh, and then you can delegate as much as you want, depending on how much you want the virtual system to have available to it. You can always change this after you've installed it or created your virtual machine. So go ahead and click Next. We are going to create a virtual hard disk available to this virtual machine. So we'll leave this option selected. Go ahead and click Create. We'll leave it as the default virtual disk, virtual boss disk image. We'll leave it as dynamically allocated, which means that it will begin as a small size and only increase its size as needed. So we don't need to use up all the space all at once like we would with a fixed size. It will allocate more space on your hard disk as you install more things into the virtual machine. Go ahead and click Next. In this case, I want to limit the total amount of size to 120 gigabytes for a Windows, or I'm sorry, for a Ubuntu installation. And that will create your virtual machine. Now, nothing's installed on it. There's no Ubuntu or Linux installation, just the virtual machine, as if you had another computer created with these specifications. So we'll do that next. However you're going to install Ubuntu, you need to download the image first. So to do that, just go to Google or your favorite search engine and search for Ubuntu download. The latest is Ubuntu 20.04. You can click the download button. It'll begin to download. Go ahead and save. We'll wait for that to finish. All right, after it's done downloading the Ubuntu ISO image, the next thing you want to do is check the hash. The hash is a checksum of the file that validates, it's like a fingerprint that validates that it's not corrupt and all the data has been downloaded correctly. So to do that, run Windows PowerShell. Go to the downloads folder where it's saved at least in my case it was saved in the downloads folder and you can do get dash file hash you can use tab for auto completion you start typing the beginning of the name hit tab it'll finish the file name this will take a minute to calculate the hash um, it's because it's a large file and then we can compare that with the hash from online so on the download screen, when it's done downloading, there's a link right here that says verify your download. If you click on that, it'll come up and show the, the checksum. And so you can compare that with what Windows PowerShell output from get file hash. 
I usually just look at the first few characters and the last few. B45165, B45165, and the last few, F6E3D, F6E3D. If there's any small change, the, I, the checksum is going to be wildly different. So that looks correct. We can go ahead and start using it. Going back to VirtualBox, we need to start using the ISO image. So go to Storage. And right here at the top, it'll say Controller IDE. There will be a CD symbol, and it says Empty. We want to select that. And on the right-hand side, click the CD symbol with the drop-down arrow. Choose a disk file. And go find the ISO image that we downloaded. In my case, it's in the Downloads directory. I'll select that and click Open. You'll see it show up on the left-hand side as, as if it's installed in the CD drive. And this is a bootable ISO image, so we want to check the live CD DVD, live meaning it's bootable. Go ahead and click OK, and at this point we can click Start to boot up the system. While it's booting, it's going to check all the files again to validate that they were downloaded correctly, and there's no corruption, and if everything checks out, it should say that there's no errors. All right, it says check finished, no errors found. Now it's going to boot into Ubuntu and give us the option to try Ubuntu or install it. In this case, we want to install it. At this point, whether you're installing from a live DVD, a live CD, a live USB stick, or if you're installing from an ISO image in a virtual box, the installation process will be essentially the same. Go ahead and click install Ubuntu. The keyboard layout looks fine, so I'm going to continue. I'm going to use a normal installation. I'll go ahead and allow it to download updates while installing Ubuntu. That will just allow it to be completely done by the time it's done installing Ubuntu instead of installing those updates after I finish installing the files from the ISO image. I'm going to click continue. Since this is a virtual machine and there's nothing else installed on here, we can allow it to erase the disk and install Ubuntu. It's only going to erase the virtual disk that we created when we set up this virtual machine inside a virtual box. It's not going to erase my hard drive in Windows or anything else. It's just dealing with this isolated system that we've created within VirtualBox. So we'll go ahead and leave it as erase disk and install Ubuntu and click install now. It's just giving one last message to tell you it's about to format the hard drive. This, again, is the virtual hard drive that we created, not the real hard drive, my C drive or my D drive. We'll go ahead and click Continue. Pick your time zone. Now you can enter in your login information. Click Continue. And it'll go through the rest of the installation process. Okay, once it's done with its installation, it asks you to restart now. We can go ahead and click Restart Now. It's going to ask you to remove the installation medium and press Enter. To do that, just click on the red X on the top right, select Power Off the Machine, and click OK. That'll turn off our virtual machine. And then we go back to Storage, select our drive, and then remove it from the virtual drive. We can uncheck Live CD. Click OK. Let's go ahead and boot our new VirtualBox installation of Ubuntu 20. Let's click Start. Go ahead and click on your username and log in with your password. There's some default startup stuff with Ubuntu. You can skip all that stuff. Next, I don't send info on my system to Canonical. No location services, and we're ready to go. Click Done. All right. And Ubuntu is installed. After you boot Ubuntu for the first time, there's a few packages you're going to want to install for development. To install those, type sudo apt install G++, GCC, CMake, and Make. It's going to tell you it wants to install additional packages. 
along with the ones you asked for, go ahead and say yes and press enter to accept that. Once that's done, you're going to want to install the VirtualBox Guest Editions. It's a collection of tools that make your experience with VirtualBox more fluid and allows you more graphics modes and interaction with your host system. So to do that, click Devices, insert Guest Edition CD image, and it will insert a virtual disk into your virtual machine CD drive. It'll ask if you want to run the files. Go ahead and select Run. Enter your admin password, which is the same password you created when you set up Ubuntu. And go ahead and let that install. It's important that you install GCC, G++, CMake, and Make before installing the guest editions because it requires those packages to be installed in order to completely install the guest editions. Once, that, once that's complete, you can go ahead and press enter or return to close the window. You can close your terminal window and reboot your virtual machine. If during the installation it gives you an error saying there's uh, corrupt files during the installation of uh, after checking files on Ubuntu ISO image, but you've checked the ISO checksum yourself and it looks correct, then there's a problem that's a known issue with VirtualBox 6.1.6 and later. And what you have to do is turn off the Windows 10 features for hypervisor, which is a supervisory tool to enable more, better performance, faster speeds with uh, virtual machines that are running under the Windows operating system. So to do that, there's some instructions online uh, of how to do that. What you want to do is run settings. Look for Windows Features and click Turn Windows Features On or Off. And then make sure you've unchecked Virtual Machine Platform and Windows Hypervisor Platform. And then click OK. And after you do that, it'll ask you for a restart. I've already done that, but go ahead and do that. Reboot your system. And then one more thing you need to do is run a command line window as administrator. So go ahead and click run as administrator. And then you want to do this BCD edit set hypervisor launch type to off. BCD is boot control. It'll say operation completed successfully. Restart one more time and then you should be able to install uh, Ubuntu and or VirtualBox like we did.